Hello YouTube viewers. This is the first episode in many that I've planned to go through various gemstones. This gemstone is sodalite. Um, this will be more of a demo than a training exercise. Uh, we're gonna go through this and uh, just take see how to make a, a pretty pendant out of this uh, piece of sodalite. Um, I've dipped it in water which helps you see the color uh, of the gemstone more accurately and gives you a better idea of what it will look like as a finished piece. At this point I'll be using a diamond trim saw to uh, start trimming the stone down. Um, I want to trim off any pieces of the stone that, um, that are larger and would uh, require a lot of grinding. So I'll basically get the stone into the shape that I want to start with when I do my grinding. And this is <clears throat> by no means will you get any kind of a fine uh, work with this. This is just a rough cut on, on the various edges. The blade is running in a, up in a pool of water so that uh, it stays wet so that it uh, doesn't burn up. And it also keeps the dust down. Those pieces that I pulled off and set aside, I'll use those later in some little project. That blade is actually fairly safe to use. Um, you can jam your finger into it pretty hard and it won't hurt you. Now we're going to start grinding. I start off with an 80 grit diamond uh, lap disc. And this um, has water dripping on it. The tube you see coming down from the top right hand corner of the screen is uh, just a plastic tube um, in, coming out of a large bucket of water. I've got a couple valves up there where I can control the flow um, of how fast the water is coming out. But I use a fairly good stream of, of uh, water coming out there so that uh, it washes uh, the material off as it gets ground off. And uh, especially at, these, at this, these larger grits, at an 80 grit, that's a very large grit. Most people probably wouldn't even use that. They'll start with a 320, but I like to use the larger grit uh, speed up removing material on these stones, especially when I'm doing a free form stone like this. If I was doing a, a more traditional shaped stone and a very a small, I might not use, I probably wouldn't use an 80 grit. The, um, as the water and material washes off the, the disc onto the, out to the edge of the centrifugal force, it goes into a waste tube. Uh, which you see exiting the machine on the left hand side there and it goes down into a, a waste bucket. I generally don't have a problem with dust uh, until after things that have splattered dry then there's a, a film or a dust it's, it's just a film of stuff everywhere you can see it over everything uh, is that white it just grinding rocks no matter what you do it, it's going to splatter and make a mess I have several different types of lights um, I have fluorescent halogen and LED um, so I have various color of light sources to help me see the stones better and see the color of the stones at this point, now I'm, tra I'm uh, going to a 320 grit grinding disc. And um, the 80 grit 
will have put some you know significant scratches in the stone but it will have removed the material down I've got it to the shape that I basically want it in now at the 320 I'll continue to remove material off the stone but uh, I'm also getting rid of all those those deeper scratches and I'll keep examining it uh, for looking for uh, areas that need more attention because um, we're constantly shaping and, and taking the ridges off the stone the uh, this disc happens to be out of balance just a little bit so the grinder keeps wanting to walk across the table and occasionally I do drop the stone and you see it flying around the there so I've got the stone in the basic shape that I want it and now I'm going to drill a hole in the top of the, uh, the stone for where the bale or the the, the place where you run the chain through the pendant will go and I've ground just a very it's just a very small flat spot on top of the stone uh, just so the drill bit can kind of grab a, a spot where it can start drilling in I'm only going to drill a hole about a half inch deep um, these diamond bits don't really have a way to uh, get rid of material so you you put a little pressure on it, drill a little bit out, let off, and let it wash out, and just keep going out. I'm not drilling at a high speed, it's actually a very, fairly slow speed. And uh, I've got it in a clamp so that uh, it maintains a uh, straight up and down position. And uh, now I'm checking the depth of the hole, just pushing a piece of wire in there and seeing how deep I got it. Make sure it's going to be deep enough for the bale I've got made for it. And periodically I'll be dipping the, the stone in water, washing off any uh, material that may be stuck to it as I feel it on there. Because I don't want any large pieces of grit or anything on that. And because um, we're, we're starting to get into our, our polishing phase here where we, we don't want any deep scratches in there. And I'll keep examining it through the, through the whole process looking for those flat spots, looking for areas that I've missed in the shaping. And we're taking off the 320 and we're going to go to an 800 grit. The 800 grit will continue to remove material but at a very slow rate. Um, if you left the stone pressed down on that grinding wheel in one spot too long it would still grind a flat spot into it. Um, that's why we, it's, it's a, you constantly keep it moving. And I keep feeling for the different spots on it. You can tell a lot of times when you're, you gotta, you press lightly down against the grinding disc and you hit a little ridge on it. You can actually hear it and feel it just a bit as you're going through that. Now in these videos, I've, I've decided to take the, uh, audio of the grinding and out of them because it was just too annoying and you can see it's starting to um, get a little little shinier not a lot but a little bit future videos we probably will not go through nearly this much of the grinding and, and some of the process we'll just t hit the highlights of uh, each stage and show you where, how the stone progresses through them Now the stone's dry at this point, and you can see it's starting to take on a little bit of a shine. Okay, now I'm going to go to a 1200 grit. And this stage, 
similar to the others, is removing scratches from the previous stage. Um, at this point, we we barely remove any material. It's um, it's more scratch removal and getting into the polishing. These discs that I'm using right here, they don't provide as good a finish as the ones we're moving to now. Even though this disc um, is a 600 grit, uh, it kind of seems like we're going backwards. It actually gives me a better finish. And uh, this is a, kind of a pre-polishing stage for me. This disc is very worn, so it doesn't really remove any material, but it does, does get it pre-polished. Like I said, removing those, we're removing scratches. And there's a whole lot of evaluating going on here. Um, just making sure that I um, haven't missed any spots. Now we're going to move to a, the uh, poli one of the polishing stages. This is a 1200 grit disc and it's worn also, but it still, it still does a good job polishing. And I started out with the water at a little higher level just to make sure I washed any any grit off the disc that may have, <clears throat> may have been present from a previous operation or things happening around the, in the shop. And then slowed it down. Sodalite's not an extremely hard stone. So this process went fairly quick. If it would have been one of your harder stones, like a corundum or something, this takes much longer to go through these stages because you spend a lot more time polishing because uh, it takes longer to get the material off. The whole process only took about an hour from what you see in this, this video. See now we, we're actually getting a little bit of shine to it. We'll have one more stage after this where we'll really polish it up. Now this is just a felt pad that we put a um, polishing compound on. Um, I don't use a lot of water here. Uh, there I've just wet the stone and dipped it into the powder just to get enough powder on there to work with a little bit of moisture that's on the felt pad. Um, some people don't use any water at this point. Um, I prefer to use a little bit. It kind of depends on which stone I'm, on the stone I'm working with. Um, but at this point you can generate quite a bit of heat. Um, in the polishing process, but the water does help with that. And I keep a bucket beside me over there that I can use to dip the stone in for washing it off and making sure I don't have any, you know, there's no contaminants on the surface. And I don't want to contaminate the, the grinding disc either, or the polishing disc. You have this, this particular sodalite that I have um, has a good quality in it that you can actually put light through it. A lot of sodalite you can't do that. Here we're actually fitting the um, the bale. That's that uh, eyelet looking piece of silver there. And uh, I'm mixing up now some uh, epoxy, quick setting epoxy. It'll set up in about five minutes. But mix the hardener and the resin together in equal amounts and then uh, 
I take the bale and just dip it into that epoxy. The bale has some ridges on the, on the straight part of it that goes into the stone. And then of course the, uh, the drilling from the stone was, was smooth, but it wasn't perfectly smooth. It'll have some little ridges and things in it. And that's what the epoxy will hold into because after it's set for a couple hours, it gets hard enough to where I can take the X-Acto knife and I just pop the, uh, the epoxy off whatever's residue on the stone. Cause you can't, you just can't put it together without leaving some epoxy on it hardly. Here's the finished pendant with beginning and after pictures. We appreciate you uh, watching this and um, please subscribe so you can catch the future videos and uh, hit the like button. It'll help us out.